What's going on guys, Peter here, back with another video. Now today I'm gonna to be talking about a big upgrade that I've uh, recently purchased for my day-to-day -day carry. One of my largest purchases of my life, I believe. Being fairly young, I haven't had any big uh, expenses, thankfully, but uh, I'm very, very excited for it. And what it is, is a new laptop. So to kind of go over why I purchased a new laptop, I have been using the Lenovo IdeaPad Y410P for about five years now. I bought it back in high school and now I'm a senior in college. It's big, chunky, it's missing trim pieces, uh, the graphics card is completely burnt out. Uh, it came with, at the time, the highest end specs you could get as far as processor goes. Um, it had the i7-4700MQ. Uh, which was four cores, eight threads, I think. And I think it had hyper-threading. And also, it had the G NVIDIA GT 755M. That is fried. It's just scuffed up and heavy. I think it weighs like six pounds. And it sometimes it doesn't connect to Wi-Fi when I first boot, and I have to reboot two or three times, just because I don't know. And Luckily, it's lasted me a long time, and it's been very reliable, and has gotten me through almost all of college. But now, it was finally time to modernize. And I don't know about you, I'm not a big fan of Apple, but one thing they do do right is the build quality of their MacBooks. They are A1. The solid aluminum unibody design I think is just delicious, and I love how solid it feels. I think they're just awesome, awesome feeling devices. And up until the last couple of years, I th thought the keyboards were very good too. Once they put in the butterfly switches underneath those keys, no, that's a no-go for me. So I really like the kind of 2014 and before MacBook Pro keyboards. Uh, and uh, you'll see how much I like them in a minute. Now, the laptop I decided to buy was from a company that many of you may have not heard of. It is called the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro. So Xiaomi is a massive electronics company over in China, and they make anything from smartphones, laptops, robotic vacuums, lamps, electric scooters, anything you can think of. Electric toothbrushes, literally absolutely everything. But uh, they have gained themselves a very solid reputation uh, on the eastern side of the planet. And so when I found out that they made a line of laptops, I checked them out, and it turns out they literally tried to copy the MacBook line to a T, but only when it comes to design. They are solid aluminum, they are thin, great battery life, but they run Windows, and they are a third of the price. So the goal of the Mi Notebook Pro is basically to deliver a premium Windows 10 experience to those who dislike Mac OS, or don't like the price tag of MacBooks. The Mi Notebook Pro has pretty fantastic specs for the price. It starts at around um, $1,200 regularly, I think, maybe $1,100, but it is significantly discounted a lot of the time, and the base model can be had for, I think, under $800 on Gearbest if you catch a really good sale. So like, for under $800, you can get a solid, premium ultrabook experience for the base model which has the 8th gen i5 and 8 gigs of ram uh, i have the top of the line model i paid 839 dollars and 99 cents and it has the i7 8550u with 16 gigs of ram and a 256 gig nvme samsung ssd which gets really great read and write speeds right off the bat i'm going to get this big gripe out of the way it only ships with a Chinese version of Windows. So what this means is when you purchase it from these Chinese retailers, it'll only have Chinese as an available option when you boot it up for the first time. So for those people that are not, that are not technically savvy, I would not recommend this laptop at all. But if you're willing to take a chance, it literally takes 15 minutes to get, into, get it into English. All you have to do is take a USB stick and download the Windows 10 install media from another computer and then you plug in the thumb drive into the laptop 
boot from the thumb drive and reinstall Windows on the solid state drive. And when you do that, the Windows 10 key is uh, baked into the BIOS. So it, if you install Windows 10 Home version, which is what it comes with, it should automatically find the key and activate Windows automatically. Now the great thing about this laptop is not only does it have 16 gigs of RAM and the quad core 8 thread new mobile i7, it also has an Nvidia MX150. This is something that many, many, many of the MacBook Pros do not do, even at extremely high price points. The MX150 is a very interesting card. There's actually at least three different variants out there. There is a very, very low, and 10 watt TDP version that I think has a base clock of 900 megahertz and that is for ultra thin devices that have it. There's also, I think, I believe the Minova Pro has a higher clocked version at about 1300 megahertz but still has a 10 watt TDP and then there's also a much higher clocked version that has a 25 watt TDP that's in a little bit thicker devices. The performance I, for me has been great. Uh, for example, uh, here's Fortnite running at 1080p. I can get locked in about 60 frames a second at full textures and I'm using low settings um, except for render resistance. I'm using medium and it looks great, plays great. I just plug in my PlayStation 4 controller with a micro USB cable and it's off to the races. Now onto the build quality. It is fantastic. This thing is about as premium of a device as I have ever felt. If you have bought an aluminum smartphone in recent years, whether it's a OnePlus device, which is I personally have, or any other aluminum premium smartphone, that's what it feels like. Cold, hard metal that doesn't flex barely at all. It's just beautiful to look at. There's very minimal branding. There's no logos on the back. The only logo on the entire device is a small me logo underneath the screen in the bottom bezel. Even though it's so well built, it's not too hard to get into the device. All you have to do is take out all of the visible screws on the bottom, and then there is one screw sadly hidden under one of the feet. Um, on the top of the device right here, but it's okay because how often are you gonna go in anyway? As far as upgradability goes, it is not too good. Um, the RAM is soldered on, so if you're gonna wanna upgrade that in the future, just buy it right off the bat. That's what I did. I believe 16 gigs will be enough for me. Up until now, with my old laptop, I only had eight, and it pretty much did everything I needed to except when I started editing 4K video, it really got a little bit choppy. And even though this is a thin and light device that has high-end internals, the port selection is still pretty good. It has an HDMI 1.4 port, so sadly no 4K at 60 hertz out of that. Uh, it has two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and it also has two Type-C ports. Sadly, those do not support Thunderbolt 3, um, but the top port is used for charging. Um, and the charger I believe is 65 watts and it supports fast charging and it can charge pretty damn fast I'll tell you that much. It's fantastic and with great battery life. It's a great duo good thing The USB-C ports support 4k at 60 Hertz if you adapt it to a display port cable or something like that Maybe HDMI whatever you have on your monitor or television as I said one of the main drawbacks was that it ships with Windows in Chinese but that wasn't a big problem for me. I just reinstalled English Windows, took 15 minutes, it was great. And plus you get a nice fresh clean install of Windows with no blowware. I guess another downside I could say is the trackpad. Not because it's not fantastic, it's actually really large, Windows precision drivers, gestures work amazing, it's really a pleasure to use. But I didn't really know that trackpads weren't very durable. This is 100% my fault, but the other night I was sitting in bed, sitting up with the laptop in my lap, and I had my little TV remote. It's a TCL TV, um, so it has Roku built in, and it's one of those little remotes, sitting above it. And I scooched up a little bit to straighten up my posture, and the little remote tumbled down the blanket and landed onto the trackpad right next to the fingerprint sensor. Which works fantastic, by the way, for Windows Hello. Oh, fantastic. But it landed right on the trackpad on the corner of the fingerprint sensor and it cracked the glass just a tiny bit. And I was livid. I was mad for, I was mad all day. I was absolutely freaking out. You can't even feel it though. It's underneath and it doesn't affect the performance. And so I guess it's just nice to kind of have one blemish on it now so I don't have to be so anal um, when it comes to taking care of it, but it's still upsetting. 
I didn't know that could happen, but I guess it could kind of happen to any anyone, you know, any kind of laptop with a glass trackpad, which is most devices out nowadays. But I'm gonna have to live with it and enjoy it either way. So far, I have to say that I'm 100% satisfied. It has been a wonderful device, it's beautiful. People look at it and are baffled that you can buy something so nice that's not a MacBook. No one just knows the market and I just wanna to try to help spread the word and show everyone that there's a great, great amount of devices that are really, really premium out there. Excuse me. But there's so many great things out there that we just need to go hunt down and I'm trying to do my best to share those with you guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll catch you on the next one.